Snastruck. Hello, a couple years ago I made kind of a pipe dream sort of video talking about arcade games that the Super Nintendo missed out on while putting aside the reality that they likely would have never worked on the SNES. I thought I'd revisit that idea, only this time looking at some of the lesser known arcade games that were made by some of the world's premier developers at the time, everyone from Capcom to Konami to Data East to Technos. And again, yes, I'm well aware that these games would not work on the Super Nintendo as they did in the arcade, but hey, it's a fun excuse to play some arcade games. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs was made by Capcom as a complimentary piece to the Saturday morning cartoon of the same name. It's based on the comic Xenozoic Tales. This one has similar features to Alien vs. Predator, where there's four playable characters and it's three-player compatible with all sorts of special moves including team attacks. What makes this one interesting is that when the dinosaurs show up, they attack everything, including enemies. If you like ridiculous beat-em-ups where you get to do stuff like fight dinosaurs with your fists, then you gotta play this one. It's really fun, and it really needs a home console release of some kind. Another good multiplayer beat-em-up is Guardians Dungeon Mikai 2. I've talked about this one before, it's the sequel to Ghost Chaser Densei, which was released for Super Famicom but never left Japan. This one's a bit more intricate, featuring not only double team maneuvers, but combinations as well. And there's tons of replay value, since there's 8 playable characters. Guardians also has some of the most hilarious sprite work ever, like this first level boss who can't stop doing bodybuilder poses, and some of the enemy design here is great as well, like this boss here. Guardians is a fantastic beat-em-up that has a lot to offer. Offer. Technos made great games like Double Dragon and the WWF Arcade games, and they also made this beat-em-up called Shadow Force. I really like this one because it's got a wide variety of moves you can utilize with four different characters that you can switch between, and the combat feels so fluid and satisfying. Sure, this game may not look as spectacular as some of the other arcade beat-em-ups that were out there at the time, but Shadow Force is all about feel, and this one just feels good to dig into. If you're more into fighting games, check out this one called The Outfoxies, made by Namco. This is one of the first arena fighting games coming a couple years before stuff like Super Smash Bros. I totally suck at these kinds of games, but I thought this one was just kind of an interesting relic. The focus isn't on each character's moveset or combinations or whatever, instead it's on the stage itself. You pick up weapons and items while the stage itself changes the more you play, like this speedboat where the boat rocks back and forth, or this crazy aquarium stage where a huge whale falls and enables sharks to escape their tanks as water quickly fills up from the bottom. Yeah, this game is nuts. The way the camera zooms in and out is a little disorienting at times, but still, this is a fantastic game, and obviously way ahead of its time. Here's another fighting game with a bit of a different twist. It's Monster Maulers from Konami, a one-on-one -on -one fighting game where you fight giant monsters. Now that's a cool touch. Some of the monsters are bosses you see in other Konami games like Salamander. It's also two-player co-op, but not versus. You team up against the monster with the ability to do double-team moves, which is really cool. Other than that, this is pretty typical as far as fighting games go. I just thought it was a novel idea. It's kind of like a beat-em-up boss gauntlet. Let's move on to a few side-scrolling platformers like Willow from Capcom, based off of the movie, obviously, and you switch between playing as Willow and Mad Mardigan, depending on the stage. This game has a major Ghosts and Goblins vibe going for it, albeit a bit brighter and not quite as difficult since you have a health meter, but the projectile attacks and the jumping are very similar. This was released back in 1989, and it's not so advanced that it couldn't have made it to the SNES, or Sega Genesis for that matter. If you want more of a puzzle platformer, there's Tumble Pop from Data East. This one received a Game Boy port, but it's really slow and only supports one player. The arcade version is two-player compatible and a lot of fun. You use a vacuum to suck up aliens, monsters, and ghosts, and spit them back out as projectiles, with the goal being to clear each stage of all enemies. This is an easily accessible game that's quick to hook you. It's simple to figure out, but the further you progress, the game gets really tough. So if you're looking for a single-screen arcade platformer, here you go. If you want more of an action-oriented platformer, then there's Magic Crystals. This is a top-down game that gives off some adventure genre vibes with a lot of puzzle elements here. This game could have easily worked on the SNES in one form or another, and it's a tremendous playthrough. Jumping can be a bit tricky because of the overhead viewpoint, but this game combines so many things from bullet hell dodging to puzzle solving to just good old hack and slash. Highest recommendation for Magic Crystals, it's great. Another game I've really enjoyed over the years is SNK's Windjammers. This one thankfully has been made available for PS4 and Vita, but it started in the arcades before being ported to Neo Geo and Neo Geo CD. It's a very simple one-on-one -on -one Pong style game, but there's six different characters you can play as that have a special throw, like the Thunderloop, the Sideburner, or the Fire Snake. There's also six different courts that all vary in size and have different barriers in different spots, so each match has a different twist to it. This is one of my all-time favorite versus multiplayer games, going all the way back to when I I first played it in the arcades as a kid. 
We're getting too cutesy and tame in this video. Let's crank up the violence with Shock Troopers. Yeah, this game isn't exactly obscure. It's been made available on the Nintendo Switch just last year, and it's been talked about a lot over the years, so this isn't exactly a revelation. But I mean, you simply can't go wrong with a top-down run-and-gun eight-way shooter, making anything and everything go boom. So this is just a public service announcement. Do you like huge explosions and automatic weapons in video games? Do you like fighting bosses that take up nearly half the screen? Do you like being able to switch between multiple paths, characters, and weapons like flame throwers and Gatling guns, then you gotta play Shock Troopers. If you want more of an old-school shooter-style run-and-gun, then there's Actfancer Cybernetic Hyper Weapon, another game by Data East where you're a cyborg that takes on all sorts of different forms, enabling different playstyles. This one's a little like R-Type meets Ninja Spirits meets Forgotten Worlds. The sound design and visual style almost have kind of a Splatterhouse vibe to them, but the enemy and boss design here are crazy and unpredictable. This game is unfortunately very short, but it's really tough, and I enjoyed seeing what kind of insanity this game could produce. There's Aqua Jack, also known as Aqua Attack. Here we have kind of a rail shooter where you pilot a hovercraft over water and land while making everything in your path go boom across eight levels. This game is really tough because you have to multitask between eliminating stuff from your path, dodging enemy projectiles, and shooting aircraft coming at you. It's really tough, but really rewarding. It's one of those games where you just let yourself get into a zone to achieve a good balance between dodging, firing, and progressing forward. This game is a great time. Last, we have G.I. Joe, made by Konami. Obviously, this one isn't all that obscure. Come on, it's G.I. Joe. But I never saw this cabinet in the wild, ever. And in addition to that, I never hear anyone talking about what a great four-player game this is. Okay, that's just my subjective experience, obviously, but hey, I just wanted an opportunity to talk about this one. It represents the source material perfectly, with all sorts of characters to choose from, like Duke, Snake Eyes, Scarlet, and Roadblock. And it's got the same kind of gameplay as Aqua Jack, just a lot more chaos and carnage. I'm still kind of bummed out that the Super Nintendo never got a G.I. Joe game, but this is the next best thing. Alright, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.